Help if I turn the microphone on, huh? Amish no, Amish sausages, Amish sausages, Amish sausages, Amish sausages. Say it three times, you know the mic works. Amish sausages, Amish sausages, Amish sausages. 
rock and roll. I have raised $1,300 for multiple sclerosis. Cool. Amish sausages. Rock and roll. Mustafa, 9DMG, what's happening, bro? Hey, hey. Nice to see friendly people. Right, I'm gonna play. Let's continue our adventure. Let's hope everything is rocking and rolling. Cool. Awesome, awesome. We're at day 101 of our adventure. And I think we're level six. And my microphone is working. I'm a sausages, I'm a sausages, I'm a sausages. An axe age, a sword age, shields a ribbon, a wind age, a wolf age, before the world goes headlong into chaos. And so we're at Cardiff by the sea, Cardiff, and the Severn Sea, and the Irish Sea. And where should we go? To Ireland? To go to Ireland and cause some trouble. See what our quests are. We still need to deliver a message to Elderman Sigeberth. Good armor. Yeah, he doesn't like us. He wants to kill us. And we have to go and we have to find this. I thought we already got that guy. I guess we didn't. We didn't capture this guy yet. The bad guy, this murderer. So we have to go to Isra. We didn't capture the murder from Isra because Isra was pillaged. And so we could not capture... Hey! Yeeps! What's happening, brother? How are you? Thank you so much for showing me your country today. It was nice chatting with you. Hola, senor. Was ist los? Dos Bedania. Thank you so much for the tour of Brazil today. That was nice, man. And the gardens on the beach that you showed me, I used to design gardens like that. That's what I did for my career. <laughs> So we have to get back up north, guys. So Wessex has taken Tomten, which means Mercia and Wessex are going to be at war. But we are at Cardiff, ancient Cardiff in the kingdom of the Simri. And so we are at Cardiff and we could book passage where we sit. And we got tons of food, ale, battle trophies, we're doing good. We've got 16,000 coin. We've got 16,000 gold. Our army is looking pretty good. I've got some good troops. Some sailors that I modded the sailors so that they can upgrade to Vi Vikinger. I've worked on the gardens at the White House. That's what I used to do. I used to manage the number one lawn and landscape company in the United States. 
And so I used to take care of a lot of big properties. I used to, t Wonder Woman used to be one of my clients. And so that's what I used to do. I was Milton Hershey's gardener for Hershey's Chalk Plant. I have a lifetime supply of Hershey's chocolate. But thank you. I would love to visit your country. And I know I know not as much about your country as I do, but I've been to Argentina. I've been almost everywhere in the world except for Africa and Asia. So I haven't been to the Pacific Rim and I have not been to Africa. Um, but I've been just about everywhere else from Russia to Scandinavia to Chile and Argentina and um, El Salvador and Guatemala and Mexico. And... <laughs> so I've got some troops and we are still really low level. We just kept, we just recruited some of our new troops. And I just leveled up. Now Harald Rig, Harald Rig. Harald Rig was a real person. So I'm portraying a real person from history. So I'm only level nine. I am unknown. Nobody knows me. I'm nobody. I'm just a pirate. I'm just a Viking. And uh, so we're just started out. I think we've been playing this campaign now for maybe a week. I think we've been playing this campaign for a week. And so we're level 10. Yeah, we're level nine. We just leveled up. So we're doing all right. We got some really good scores. So I got some good iron flesh and power strike. I'm doing pretty good. Um, we're going to need that sea king and navigation and surgery. And we got four points. And I want to kick them down to persuasion would be really good, wouldn't it? But I want the sea king too because I want to get start getting some ships. So I need that sea king. I want another persuasion because I'm going to woo the lady of my choice. And I want that first aid so I can heal my companions so that they can heal me too. And surgery so all my guys stop dying. And that two-handed weapons up to 100. Our throwing is 109, not too bad. I primarily am gonna use my one-handed weapons. And so hold rig is one of the rebels who refused to swear an oath of allegiance to King Harold Fairhair. And he fought against King Harold Fairhair with his brother, Had the Hard, around 875 AD. And Harold Herig and his brother, Had the Hard, were from Telemark, um, northeast of Tunsburg. And Tunsburg is where my ancestors came from. I did. I did change my name. And and the thing is, is the MS is for multiple sclerosis because I have multiple sclerosis, which is why I talk a little slow. My brain is fine, but my brain sends my language out slower, slowly. And then some days I can walk and some days I can't walk. So I'm chilling. I'm chilling and I'm always safe and I really do live on a battlefield and um, the sun's going down over the Appalachian Mountains right now so I live here at the halfway point of the Appalachian Trail which is over 2,000 miles and so I'm watching the sun go down and I think you and I are about in the same time zone <laughs> I did. I'm doing pretty good today, man. I don't have alien cockroaches eating my legs. So I'm doing pretty good today. And um, so I'm doing all right, man. I have I have good days, I have bad days, but you know what, you roll with it and you have, as Gandalf once said, all you have to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, I probably got a word wrong. All you have to do is decide what to do with the time that you are given, Gandalf the Grey. So, Warband, man, it was good watching you play. I enjoy watching you play very much, and I'm enjoying your game very much.
I am pretty healthy. I can still get up out of this chair and kick some ass. <coughs> Just two years ago, I looked like someone from Fight Club. I could run 12 miles. I could do a thousand push-ups. I could do a reverse roundhouse kick. And two years later, with multiple sclerosis, I'm in a wheelchair. So that's how quickly multiple sclerosis could hit anybody. Yeah. No, that was a video. That was a rebroadcast. I was up on the Appalachian Trail and I was doing a charity benefit hike for multiple sclerosis. I used to do, I've been doing benefit charity hikes for 15 years on the Appalachian Trail. And that was a rebroadcast from a five part multiple sclerosis charity benefit hike that I did on the Appalachian Trail a couple of years ago when I was first starting to get sick. Oh no, it's okay. Don't be sorry, dude. Believe me. If you knew where I've been, then you would know that I'm doing okay. So, you sound like a young man in your stream. When I was in my 20s, I was an international smuggler. So if you've seen where I've been, I'm doing okay. <laughs> People have said to me over the years, they said, you know, Daryl, with everything that you're facing, you still manage to crack people up every day. And so, guys, I'm sitting here running my mouth. And, dude, I'm always going to turn in, tune into you playing um, your game. It looks kick ass. I can't see that's the thing. I don't even have to play it now because I can just watch you play it. And there's another friend of mine, he plays FIFA. And I used to play FIFA. I can watch him play FIFA. So I can chill out and you guys are like my uh, you guys are like my new favorite TV stations. Because if you guys tune in and you guys follow me and shit, I'm definitely going to check out your streams. I'm disabled now. I have all the time in the world. Here in Gettysburg, prior to my illness, I managed the 13th best B&B in the world is here. And... I was the um, volunteer coordinator for East Confederate Avenue for Culp Hill, part of the battlefield. And I was also in charge of horticultural preservation and restoration for the Preservation Association for the National Park Service here in Gettysburg. So that's what I did before I got sick here the last eight years. And so you guys, let's check out Care Diff, man. They got some big ships to sell. We're not gonna buy any, we're gonna steal them like a proper Viking, right? I freaking love this. I love this. I love this. Look at us. We got somebody's dirty armor off a dead body. We took the lutefisk out of their back pocket, so we're going to eat good tonight. Did you know that for $3 you can get a packet of lingonberry seeds and you can grow a lingonberry plant to make your own Norwegian lingonberry jam and each plant Matt grows produces three pounds of lingonberries so you're gonna get three pounds of lingonberries off a plant for three bucks that's a deal my kid has to bring me lingonberry jam from the international market in DC it's the only play where I, place I can get that good Viking jam baby so let's get some sailors kick ass. So you guys, what I did, I have another very heavily, heavily modded Viking Conquest that I've worked on for the past couple of years. But one thing I started doing is to make my sailors a little more valuable. I expanded the troop tree so that I can now upgrade sailors to Vikings and they will then upgrade to elites so that I have access to those troops so I can be a bastard all over the world like a Viking and I can still get troops from ports even though all these other countries are going to hate my guts unless I conquer them. You know the funny irony in what you just said, Warband? You know what's really funny about that? Is my name is Daryl Lloyd Tungit. Okay, I'm a transparent. I'm, I'm all over the internet. But what my name means in Welsh, because Daryl and Lloyd is Welsh, um, Daryl and, and Lloyd in Welsh means um, beloved gray wanderer. So I'm like, that's kind of cool. You know, it's kind of like Gandalf. I've always loved Gandalf. So 
Thank you. That's so nice for the compliment. And I always thought the similarity in the names was kind of funny. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of the films, even though they changed strange things. I don't understand why the in the Tolkien in the Peter Jackson, he just changed insignificant things. But still, you know, it's kind of an impact when you read the books that. They, uh, like Tom Bombadil, for example, um, some of the things were different, even though I enjoyed the film so much. The Vikings TV show makes me puke. It makes me angry. The first season of Vikings TV show, I saw that in the first episode, I saw that and I said, now, okay, so... The first edition of the sagas, the first time I read the Lay of Harold or I ever read the Havamal, um, was a 1913 original copy by Olive Bray that my, was in my grandmother's library. And so, you know, I read about Ragnar was insignificant when I was a little kid. But, so I'm watching the TV show in the first episode, and I saw he's in this little farm and he's supposed to be a prince. His father was Sigurd Ring and he was a king and I thought to myself well you know if he's a prince he's not necessarily living in this okay a prince back then could actually and most likely was living in a little hovel farm like Ragnar was really living in so I was it was believable at first but then as the program progressed it just turned into so much fantasy unfortunate and I, my hats, my hats are off to the Britain Walda team, because when I first fired up Viking Conquest, I think it was like 2014 or 15 or something, about five years ago, um, I saw that all the bad guys were Vikings, and I was like, they did this right, because they were, they were domestic terrorists, is what they were. So, and where I grew up, okay, the little town where I grew up. Okay, is Norway, Illinois is where I grew up. People still speak Norwegian there in little mower shops and farm implement tractor supply shops. People still speak Norwegian and Swedish where I grew up. And so Norway, Illinois is the very first permanent settlement by Norwegian immigrants on this continent is in Norway, Illinois. It used to be called Stavanger and that's where I grew up. So I grew up around Viking pop culture like everywhere in our little town. So everyone, you know, is goofy Viking shirts and Viking mugs and furry Viking hats. We grew up with that, that pop culture. Um, the Sven jokes and everything. And uh, so now when the Vikings TV show comes out and this becomes so popular and I look at the pop culture, it's almost like a, uh, a throwback to yesterday's like pop culture when I was a kid in the 70s, you know. <laughs> So, the pop culture explosion all over again. Like, uh, my aunts, they talk like the woman in the movie Fargo, and my uncles are like the guys in Grumpy Old Men. They're really, they're like that. Gustafs is included. So there's nobody in here that we need to talk to. I was hoping, one of the reasons I came into Car Def was to find another companion. See, we should have plenty of grub. We got some sailors. We've got some sailors. And we didn't run into any companions. And we were looking for a. Monastery. Do you see you guys see how I just forgot that simple word? Okay. That's called cognitive dysfunction that comes with multiple sclerosis. So I'll forget that word, but then in three minutes, I'll remember it. I might not remember your screen name for 24 hours, but I will remember our entire conversation. I'll remember watching you guys play a game yesterday, but I won't be able to remember your screen name. But then 20 minutes later, I'll remember your screen name. So... And then some days that doesn't happen at all. So that's called cog fog. And so, 
No, one of the reasons, one of the reasons that I do my Viking Conquest stream is to turn my bullshit meter on, okay? Because there's a lot of, sh of absolute malarkey that I see all over the internet. And I hate to see young people seeing this pop culture and believing that it's real history because it's not, it's really not. Snorri Sturluson is not. I've noticed these young people on YouTube commenting that Snorri Sturluson is the primary source. No, he's not. My primary focus of study at the Art Institute Museum in Chicago in the 80s was what we called dark age history back in the day before we knew any better. Okay, so a primary source was a 6th century document that I was reproducing for museum display in class. That's a primary source. A document that, say, the Exeter book was derived from. The writings of Thorbjorn Hornklofi, who was an eyewitness to Harold Fairhair's accounts and what was happening politically in that atmosphere in Scandinavia at the time. The man was a first-hand eyewitness account in the poetry he wrote. A Christian monk writing about these events 300 years later is not a primary source. If Jim Hessler writes a book about the Civil War tomorrow, he's not a primary source. Robert E. Lee, who writes a book about the Civil War the year after it ends, He's a primary source. Sturluson's not a primary source. Thorbjorn Hornklofi is a primary source. The documents that comprise the Exeter book, for example, 578 AD, is the, the burnt piece of parchment that we have, the first recording of Beowulf, the first writing of the poem, The Wanderer, those are primary sources. Those were written then. If I write about those things today, I'm not a primary source. I'm writing about these things hundreds of years later. Aside from that, what a lot of people don't realize is that Sturluson was simply practicing a writing style um, that the clergy would be employing into their reproduced manuscripts. So part of my coursework for three years at the Art Institute Museum, you've seen it on Ferris Bueller, right? Sunday in the Isle of the Grand Jatte painting, that's where I went to school. And so, and I became a great gardener. But, but uh, um, at that school, our professors did not consider somebody who wrote about something a thousand years later or 300 years later, a primary source at all. And I'm starting to see this on the internet where people are saying these are the primary sources. No, they're not. They're not. And that's, that's bullshit. And if you let me talk all day, I'm, I'll talk all day. And I don't, I'm, 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 um, I'm familiarizing myself with Twitch still. Um, and I will, I might pick your brain about subscriptions. I'm still learning about subscriptions and that sort of thing. And so what I, um, I've been on Twitch consistently since Halloween, since my birthday, I've been on Twitch, uh, because I knew I was headed for a wheelchair and I wanted to socialize. Um, and so I'm getting familiar with Twitch, getting subs set up, that sort of thing. So I'm still learning my way around. Um, I'm not new to technology, but I'm new to Twitch. And I love it. This is for me. This is Twitch is a solution. Look at you guys. Yeeps. He was showing me my friend here. He was showing me his country today. It was great. I got a, I got a tour of Brazil. It was awesome. And then you, I can check out your stream and I love hanging out with you and your friends and you guys are very positive and playing positive. And it's for me, I can sit back with a bowl of popcorn, but I'm still learning my way around. You know, you guys are much more familiar with the culture and the lingo and the language and subs and night bots and things like that. Um, you know, I can produce videos on my YouTube page pretty well, but so I'm learning my way around about what subscriptions are and what bits are. And so that's still um, new to me. And so I'm wondering if the Simri are pissed off at us or not, because the Christians in general are pissed off at us because I'm playing a real 
shitbox McGillicuddy Viking. Oh, really? Your stream looks great. And the graphics on your stream looks great. And you've got some nice positive people that come in. And you have a really great attitude. You have a very, very good attitude. Watching you streaming was fun. And that looks so cool, man. The armors that you were showing. And you were like zipping all over. And it's like a whole totally cool different world. And your friends that stopped in too are really positive people. And I, I could I could tell that they were, you know, friends of yours for a while who play Warband. It's always nice to chill out and kick back and watch positive people play games. And so I'm lucky. I've encountered good positive people here on Twitch. And I'm isolated now. Um, if I catch COVID-19, there's only a 7% chance that I'll live. And so, and I live in a very, I live in the civil war capital of the world. I live on the Gettysburg battlefield. And so it's 20 degrees outside. There's two feet of snow, but there's thousands of tourists out there from France or everywhere right now. And so I can't take a chance on catching COVID-19. So Twitch is a solution. I'm always looking for solution. Never settle for band-aids always seek solutions and my solution is to reach out and use technology and socialize and interact with great people and at the same time do something good for those less fortunate so i can turn this into fundraising to help people in need people with m multi medical research cancer fibromyalgia anything homelessness okay turn your hobbies into something good to benefit those less fortunate and that's my mission my second goal with Twitch is to socialize, interact with gamers who love the stuff that I love. And I love the stuff that you guys are up to. It's awesome. This is, Twitch is excellent. YouTube and image board culture are a thing of the past. Fully live, interactive video, multiplayer, everything. I mean, this is Fahrenheit 451 today with the technology on the wall, right? And the books, but interacting with people live in real time all over the world, technology will save the world. Absolutely. Technology will bring this whole world together. You watch. I'm confident. The technology will set us free until the Terminator comes along because he'll be back. Okay, who we got? Farmer. You know what? We could help this farmer out and then they might like us a little bit because I need to keep one port open and I'm going to attack Alt Clute because I might take Dunbertan. So I'm going to lose that port if I go toe to toe with them and help out the Northumbrians up in the Danelaw. So I need to stay friendly with the Simri at Innismon and use Innismon as my port. Kick ass. So let's help out this farmer, man. Let's do one good deed. So they won't think all of us Vikings are cannibalistic, petrified dinosaur turds. My lord, you look like a man of the sword and someone who can help us. Will you hear my plea? Buy me a beer first. A band of brigands have taken refuge in our village. We all know the story. I wish I had a big, fat McCoon's triple extra porter. So let's help this guy out. My guys need some blood. There's no companions in here. I don't want those spearmen. I'm gonna change these spearmen, the spearmen and the veterans and the Aquitanian skirmishers and the watchmen, they will all be gone. I will replace those with Frisian Vikings. And so you guys will see. Because the spearmen, they kind of suck. And the veterans, I don't like them either. So we could replace those with some more interesting troops. And I have some in my other overhaul that I've worked on. I've got some really, really cool tro troop trees. And so I'm going to throw those in there. Let's go help this farmer out. And we're going to stay buddies. Look at this bitchin' village, man. Gosh, I wish I lived here. Look at this. Move it, kid. That's right. The uh, the weapons. The blacksmith is a woman. I thought she had like a magical name. She's kind of cute. Did I tell you guys I'm half blind? What can I do for you? 
You have the voice of a man, baby. What you got, sugar? She's got a horn. The horns are fun, but I don't want to spend the money. I'm trying to save up my money so I can open up a brewery. But you guys, I'm probably boring the shit out of you. So let's get the hell out of here and let's go and help these people out with these bandits. So we have to save the village. We have to hunt down this murderer up in Isra. And I don't know if we're ever going to be able to deliver this message to Elderman Siegbert because he hates our guts and he wants our heads on a plate. He wants to drink from our skull. King Penguin! Why? Because we have actually, you know what? Warband, you asked me that earlier too. Next month in two weeks is World Multiple Sclerosis Month. I have MS. That's why I talk slow. Three months ago, I didn't talk slow. A year ago, I didn't have memory issues. A month ago, I was not in a wheelchair. Now I'm in a wheelchair. I have multiple sclerosis. And that's the second part of my reason for being on Twitch in the first place is to help promote multiple sclerosis awareness but also to do multiple sclerosis fundraising streams. And I found dozens of multiple sclerosis streamers and gamers and interesting people who are going to be doing multiple sclerosis fundraising streams for the entire month of May, or I'm sorry, March. MS Warrior is a very, very common MS Warrior is a really common, common phrase that you guys will hear if you ever explore chronic illness on the internet. You'll hear MS Warrior, I'm an MS Warrior, I'm an MS Survivor. I'm no MS Warrior. Bitches, I'm an MS motherfucking warlord. The shit I've been through, if you guys were in my body right now, you'd be calling an ambulance. But... I've been shot a few times. I've been stabbed a few times. I've skydived on LSD. So, I'm a survivor. I'm a warrior. I'm an MS warlord. So I decided to bump it up one, one notch. Multiple sclerosis warlord is a notch above warrior because I'm still kicking. A lot of my friends say, man, Daryl, I can't believe that you're still going after all the shit you've been through in the last three years with your health. And I'm still here. Tell you what you don't know. My doctors told me that I could go at any time. I have four incurable illnesses. I have multiple sclerosis, hereditary hemochromatosis, chronic costochondritis, and narcolepsy. I'm not supposed to be here, but I am. So I'm an MS warlord. So that's why I changed that. We have multiple sclerosis month coming up. I want to identify with the multiple sclerosis community and I want to represent that movement, fundraising, awareness, okay? Because uh, I used to think I knew what disabled was and I grew up with a quadriplegic uncle that I'm named after. And now that I'm actually in a wheelchair, I realize after 52 years that I really didn't know what disabled was at all. And I used to think I knew what MS was, and I really didn't know what MS was at all. And now I have MS, and I really know what MS is. And right now, my brain is like Mork for Mork, Nanu Nanu. So that's why I changed my name. And plus, I keep, I keep getting like really creepy teenagers calling me daddy. So that's not cool. <laughs> So I'll stick with MS Warlord. And thanks for asking, King Penguin. I hope you're having a, um, an awesome day. And if you guys stay safe, my man, Skynet activated. Right on. If you guys bailed on out of here, man, you guys have an awesome night. And if you guys are streaming something, man, let me know. Send me a message sometime. I'll tune in. And we are going north, and we are going to hunt down a murderer. We need to go to this village, right? Right. Langolan. Let's go to Langolan. 
We're going to stay friends with the Welsh for now because I need to use that port. There's no other port. Until I get my own ships, I need a port so I can get to Ireland, cause some trouble. We're not going to fight these guys at night. We can't see nothing. Give us some music. Thank you. Rock and roll. Viking rock and roll. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Morning, 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 morning. Let's go get this guy, right? No, we got to get the bandits. Bandits. All of our guys are looking good. We're going to kick some ass. 52 guys. I got a bunch of um, prisoners I need to sell. So kick ass. Nice sketches. I'm going to be doing some art. I do some similar art. Let's kill him. Let's go, farmers. Get up here, you guys. Oh, bitch! <laughs> oh, I'm so stoned. Yeah! The downside is I have multiple sclerosis. The upside is the meds are great. And they're all organic. So, you guys, I got my ass handed to me, but my guys did pretty good. And a battle worthy of Sog, you and your men drive the bandits out of the village, making it safe once more. The villagers have little left in the way of wealth, except for their pigs. So refuse because we're so nice. Because we're doing good. We've got some coin. And I'm not going to see the crazy pagan. It is fun though. This is fun. Did you know I had a neighbor and she was telling the other neighbors that I'm a druid. I'm going to be doing fundraising streams for multiple sclerosis the entire month of March. Me, I'll probably be doing them at least three times a week throughout March. I'm still trying to get all set up and applied and networked in with the Multiple Sclerosis Association. The whole network and community and everything is already here on Twitch. And that makes it super easy for me to get hooked up to do all that. It's already here. And I was like, damn, that's awesome. You know, I don't have to start a team. I don't have to start a fundraising page. I can already do it already through the National Multiple Sclerosis Association and everything. They have it already all set up for us and everything. They have the same thing. I do multiple sclerosis daddy and daughter walk MS and hike MS. And I did that before I was in a wheelchair, me and my daughter. And so I have a page already set up fundraising for that, for Walk MS and Hike MS. And Finish MS is what I do my Hike MS through. And I've fundraised, I've raised 1600 bucks on my last hike. And that was a couple of years ago before I got really sick. I've been really sick for two years. Um, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2014. So I've only been diagnosed for like six years. So in six years, I've ended up in a wheelchair. When I was diagnosed, I was in better shape than Brad Pitt in the movie Fight Club. I could run, ten, I could run 12 miles, I could sprint a mile, I could do a thousand pull-ups. I have a black belt in Taekwondo. So yeah, I was a super active person. I go scuba diving and everything, and hiking every day, and MS. This is my world now, and I'm cool with that. I'm all good. I got cool people coming in. I got cool people coming in. I'm meeting good friends. We play the same kind of stuff. And so mission accomplished. 
this is a solution. You guys are into all the same stuff I'm into. I've been gaming since. You guys, I got a treat for you. You guys, I have a treat for you guys. So check it out. When I was 10 years old, okay, my grandmother bought me the electronic Dungeons and Dragons. With You move the, your miniatures around this plastic and it's all electronic. And I'm going to bust that out and I'm going to play some games, some brunch with coffee. And I'm going to set my cams up and we're going to play. And I'll play with you guys. You guys can choose the moves because it's like two people. You get to play with you and your friend and then you play against the computer, the, the game. And so the game will move the dragon around. And so you and your buddy, you have to move your characters and like avoid the dragon and catch the treasure. And so I still have that from when I was a little kid. And I'm going to bust that out and I'm going to play that on a stream. It's going to be fun. The original electronic Dungeons and Dragons. That's going to be neat. And then we got Pong and that ruined everything. And then Pac-Man and then Dirk the Daring and Space Invaders. Electronic D&D, &D, man, that'd be fun. I'd love to get some of my old D&D &D friends on cam that I played D&D &D with over the last 50 years and stream some D&D. &D. That'd be so bitching. My daughter plays D&D &D with her friends. I wish her and her friends would stream their D&D &D games. They're some interest they are some interesting young people. They do cosplay and costumes, and my daughter still does living history with her friends and stuff. And thanks, man. Thanks for um, the interaction, guys. Thanks for the socialization. Ennis Mon, have you guys ever read Bernard Cornwell's Winter King trilogy, the Arthur tales about Durful Cadern and um, Arthur and Merlin and Ennis Mon? If you guys haven't ever read it, I highly recommend those that trilogy. It's such such a good tale. And so we have the king is at home. Hot cocoa, it cures everything. Tom Baker told me, he's my doctor. So do we have any companions? Anybody in here? We got some old hooker. Her pimp, her sister, her other sister, and her other sister's brother's pimp in the corner. And these guys, they don't know what they're doing. They're all hopped up on goofballs. Yep, you see that right there, what he's eating? He's eating herring and he's eating kale. And that is what caused hereditary hemochromatosis. Because my Scandinavian ancestors, 10,000 years ago, ate a very high iron seafood diet from the North Sea and the Gulf of Finland. And so by eating that high iron white fish and that high iron green northern cool season vegetables like kale and cabbage, it caused a genetic defect. And so I have two very linear genetic parents who are both Scandinavian. And over thousands of years of that diet on that plate of eating that same food, caused that genetic HFE defect that people often call the Celtic curse. I call it Iron Vikings. And so that is what caused my hereditary hemochromatosis. And so my body produces and it stores toxic amounts of iron that's destroying my organs. And that's what hemochromatosis is. And that's why hemochromatosis is what it is. It's because Norse, Scandinavians, and Danes ate that high iron seafood diet and too much of a good thing is oftentimes not a good thing after a couple thousand years. Man, that is some pig right there, boy. Hell yeah. That's one tall doctor. And so we've got nothing going on here, guys. I'm looking for companions. I'm looking for companions. That's why I'm hitting these cities. We still need to buy, find Solveig. And so we're gonna hit Jorvik, and then we're gonna head north up to Kul Nam and Northumbria, and then we're gonna go to Alba, and we're gonna raid all of their monasteries before we become official enemies with them. And then I think we're either gonna go to Norway 
Nordvegar or we are going to go to Ireland. And Warband, it was you, I think you told me I have to have a 50 Renown in order to get, because I can, dude, If you, I'll forget tomorrow. I've been playing this for 10 years, but I'll forget. And so thank you for the reminders when you guys give me tips. You told me, I think, 50 Renown I need to have in order to get the mercenary contract. Gwyn in a Cornwall have entered into an alliance. Good. Good, good, good. I like to ally those, all of those Welsh countries. Cornwall with Gwent, Gwynedd, ally, all the Brits against the Anglo-Saxons. And then the Scandinavians come in and kill them all and eat them. That's what my grandmother told me. We talked about the Picts, the Caledonians. And I was told when I was a kid that our ancestors went to Scotland and we ate the Picts. <laughs> so I've heard all the goofy, goofy stories. Egbert II, Seedrock the Elder. Seedrock, where are you going? What are you doing? I will not forget how we fought side by side at the great battle near Israel. I am honored to have fought by your side, Roald Rig. Skoll, my Jarl. There was Jarl and Karl. Karl was made to serve and Yarrow is made to be served. And so what is the realm doing? So they are assembling the army and how's the war going, my Yarrow? So they're at war with East Anglia and I want to join them in that fight against East Anglia because I want to carve out a small kingdom for myself and for the claimant, Yarrow Thorgeld in East Anglia, just like my ancestors did. And Mustafa, thanks for the follow, you guys. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate the company. And if you guys, like I said, if you guys are ever streaming, send me a message or something. I get alerts on my phone. But you guys, you stream, I definitely hop in and watch you guys stream, man. It's better than YouTube because it's live. So what about Alt Clute? So will Ally, Connacht, Aeliach, and the Weenio with Alt Clute and Alba. I was thinking about taking some of Frisia. Let's see how we are only got a six with him. Yeah, I don't trust, I don't know if I trust you enough to take men from my land. And so, where is Jarl Ronvald? Ronvald Eistensen, son of Eistensen, Eisten Glumra. Glumra means the noisy, the braggart, the loud one. Glumra, Eisten Glumra. And so, Jarl Ronvald Eistensen is the son of Eisten Glumra and I want to marry his sister. Hersa Ronvald and his sister Svanhild and Linnea Hunsecker wrote a trilogy about them. It's an excellent history. It's a really good book. She really fills in some gaps out of her very good imagination about Ronvald and Sigurd the Mighty, the first and second Jarls of the Orkneys and King Harold's conquest of, I should say, unification of Norway against the Vikings. And so that's a trilogy worth a listen or a read, The Golden Wolf by Linnea Hunsaker. It's a very good trilogy. You'll enjoy it. She doesn't hold back. I contacted her on Facebook and I thanked her for the books. I enjoyed them very much. The audiobooks were great. The Golden Wolf. But she chickened out. She chickened out. 
She didn't call the Raiders the Vikings, but she wanted to, but she didn't. King Egbert is our buddy now. And he will lose Jorvik, and then we will decide whether or not we want to keep it for ourselves. And so I'm still looking for companions. We need to go up and we need to catch that murderer. Then I'm going to raid some monasteries. I keep forgetting that word. And so, yes, we got a couple of companions that I don't want. But what I do with these guys, if I don't want them, if I don't want them, I just borrow them for a while. You guys know the drill. I'm not telling you nothing you don't already know. I'll send Bede out on a quest to spread my glory all over the kingdom. And then once they get back, they start causing trouble, I'll kick them out, send them back to Winchester. So I'll take Bede. Are you tongue-tied? Ah, you, ah, you, e, ah, you, ah, ah. Excuse me, sir. I'm a man of God, a priest of Christ. You are her old rig. Yes. Come around on Thursday night about midnight during a full moon. Bring your robe. We've got a hammer with your name on it. Excuse me, sir. I'm a man of God, a priest of Christ. You are her old rig. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Let me introduce myself. I am Bede joined the Holy Church when I was but a boy and eventually became a priest. I believe that even the toughest warrior has a place for Christ in his heart and that I can better fulfill the mission God gave to me in a shield wall than in a sacristy. And so be what precisely can you do except bore me to death? Well, sir, let me tell you, and as much as my main mission is spiritual, how you do in a shield wall? I will hire you until the ninth minute of the ninth hour of the ninth day of the ninth month of the ninth year, and then it's all over for you, son. And so, Morgant, we're gonna leave him be. This is Scald, Svare Warriors. So we got Bede, and then we're gonna send him out. Let's see if we can recruit any guys here in York yet. So we finally got to recruit some in York. We've done one or two quests for the elder here in York, in Jorvik, and we've done some quests for King Egbert, the little bitch that he is. He knuckled under, didn't he? He knuckled right under, boy. When Ragnar's son showed up, King Egbert, boy, he said, I'm all yours, don't hurt me. I love it. So let's scoot, you, you guys. Well, how we doing? So Bede, I'm going to send him out on a mission of... Did we have a ransom broker in here? No ransom broker. We still need to make it to Izara. So where did he say Rondvald was? You see, I already asked him where Rondvald was, but I already forgot. And so, Jarl Harald, we haven't met him yet. What was Harald's last name? Harald and Sigurd. His, his Sigrid, his sister. He's, because he's based on a real person. I'm trying to remember his last name and his history. Because it's interesting. Just like Ronvald. Ronvald's in the wrong place at the wrong time. I heard that you got Harris, Harris or Ronvald out of a tight spot. That was a noble deed. That's right. Good man. So, my friend, I need to know the location of Jarl Ronvald my future brother-in-law. So he's still at Middlesburg, licking his wounds because we got our asses kicked up in Alt Clute. Let's get the hell out of here. You guys, I'm probably boring the shit out of you. Let's get in some fights. And one of the things that I did, you guys will probably laugh at me, is uh, I turned my FPS down to like 30 on my stream encoder and everything seems to be jamming pretty fast. Um, it's the weird issues I've had with Twitch. When I first started streaming back around Halloween, 
I was streaming at 1280, super high def, everything super cranking. My internet's 5G and my streams were amazing. But ever since that first week, I haven't been able to do that. It's like 720 and sometimes choppy. And I know there's a lot of factors involved, but I just wish I could stream in really, really good quality like I did back then. Go longer bag sack. Yeah, we can't. We I think we need a 30 relationship with the Fortress Reeve before we can recruit any troops here at the Fortress. I don't think that having a friendship points with the Jarl has any impact on it. We have to be buddies with the Reeve. This is such a bitchin' fort. There's one fort I need to fix it. Um, I don't know why the Britain Walda team made the fortress the way they did. It's one of the fortresses near Adgafreen, and it's the fortress is outside the the the, um, the palisades. It's not modeled right. I'm surprised that they haven't fixed it after all these years. So the Reeve, we're not going to do any anything groovy for you, my friend. All right. Awesome. Shit, man. Conan, what is best in life? You're looking at it. Bitchin'. So let's go talk to Jarl Ronvald Aistenson. Hair, sir. He goes, bitch, I'm a Jarl. I conquered the Orkneys for King Harold. What are you talking about? We meet again, Harald Hrig. Vasislaus. What are you doing, my friend? He's leading the army of the realm. He has 200 troops, so I wonder what they're going to be up to. I wonder if they're headed into East Anglia, because I'd like to help them. So, what would it take to take to cement a lasting alliance with your house? It is our custom to seal any such alliances with marriage. It's too early for you to be speaking of such things. You want to bang my sister, but you're still making your mark in the world. How dare you? So we're going to scoot you guys. Let's go get out of here, make some coin. Let's go up to Alba and cause some trouble with the Caledonians, Alclute, King Constantine, and raid some monasteries, and let's get us a boat. That's my goal for tonight. We need to get on the ocean. We need six Busas, six oak Busas. And I even have my custom sails that I made bathed in blood. And we may or may not burn Lindisfarina to the ground. Elderman Eldred. I can't remember if I changed his name or not. I, his name was either Wolfred or Eldred, the actual Jarl of Bambra at the time. But I changed it in my other mod. And at 30 FPS, I might actually be able to run my overhaul mod. I tried, I've tried to stream it before. I have a pretty heavily modded version of Viking Conquest that I've done, but I haven't had luck streaming it because it's so freaking graphically heavy. But I'm trying to make a light version of it where there's so much stuff in it that I've corrected historical inaccuracies and names and relationships and everything. It's my own damn time machine. So we're we gonna get mugged. And this is, this is actually, you guys, this is on my bucket list. I've never ever got to go to Bebenberg, to Bambra Castle in Northumbria, and I'd love to. There's some hikes that I've always wanted to do that were on my bucket list right up here, and I'd love to go here. If you guys have ever been here, and you have pictures or something, I'd love to see it if you guys have ever been here. Um, but this is on my top five bucket list. I'd love to go here and camp out, go camping. I mean, the view. Shit. Ida, the flame bearer, and Uhtred. Oh shit, man, watch that first step. It was back in the Christmas of 1988, and I was walking along the coast, 
and I was down by San Diego in California and I was listening to my Walkman and I was in college and I'm looking down at my Walkman and like looking at the tunes and I look up and I almost walked off a cliff like this. I was walking off the shore. No shit, man. That would have been a Christmas present. Man, that was some scary shit. I didn't look at my Walkman anymore after that. So in the highest point of my county where I grew up, there is a long haul very similar to that where a lot of folks still meet for lodge. And a lot of them go to Christian church on Sundays and go to lodge on Wednesdays. So townsman, we did, didn't we? Hey, Captain Two Sticks. Hey, man. I love your FIFA game. I've been watching your FIFA streams. I used to play FIFA on my daughter's consoles. Now I can watch your Leeds campaign. I was watching you play that a couple of times, man. I enjoyed that very much. I used to play FIFA. It's good to see you. I was enjoying your FIFA stream and see you're another friend that plays a game that I don't currently play so I can watch you play it. I enjoy your FIFA stream man, I like that game. Ah, I can't, I can't remember where the pub is. Yup. Drunken bastards. Nope. So you guys, I'm not going to piss around. Let's get right to the meat hall. Good deal. And got a ransom broker. Let's make some coin. See ya. 2400 for that. So how are we sitting on our coin now? 18,000 coin. We can open up a brewery. I also have some battle trophies, but I have to be choosy about where I dump them. Bamber would be a good port, but let me think of a, you know what, you know where I want to dump them? Dublin, either Edinburgh or Dublin. What's up, Captain? Oh, gee whiz. Hey, you guys, thanks for the follows. Oh shit, I'm typing in caps. Thanks for the follows, you guys. For some reason, for some reason, you guys, since Friday, since Friday, my on-screen game chat and my on-screen alerts, they're not working. I've sent Twitch several support tickets. So what you guys should see is this, and I apologize. But for some reason, it's not working on Twitch since Friday. But what you guys should have seen... I will drink from your skull! ...was that. So I hope you guys saw that. So I'm hoping Twitch has it fixed soon. Because you guys are supposed to have chat right underneath my cam. And you guys are also supposed to have the alerts. For some reason, it stopped working since Friday. But thank you so much for stopping in and for the follows. So, you guys, I'll stop running my mouth and get back to the game. All right, Brunhild. Kick ass. Good deal. Bead, we're going to send him on his way, but I'm going to send him out in the world to spread the glory and the joy of the coming of Hrold. And so Brunhild, excellent. We get another companion. We're doing pretty good. Shit, we can have 191 troops. We need to get recruiting. We're going to have to go back to Denmark. We're going to have to go back to Norway. We're going to have to do some quests and some good deeds for some villages and for some Jarls. So we're still playing Carl to the Jarls and build up some troops. 
build our fortress. My goal for tonight is to get our asses a ship and start raiding. Less talking, more raiding. Don't come close to me. I'm tired of being abused by every person that crosses my path and I'll cut your throat. Calm down, I intend you no harm. Why are you so afraid? I'm sorry, but please understand, my life has been a living hell since I became a maid in the house of the Earl of Kenimer. I used to live in a small village, Dokinga. I was happy. My father, Thonkrik, cared a lot for me since my mother died. But one day, the Earl of Kenimer stopped in our village and he saw me. He, damn him, forced my father to send me to his house as a maid for his wife. He promised that he would respect me, but he lied. I don't like to speak of this, well, since then I had really become a slave, a thrall. I had, give, I had to give myself to him and then to his men. I so desperately wanted to escape, if only I could start a new free life. I know you could take me with you, I could help mend the wounds of your warriors, I could even learn to be a warrior myself. And she will, and she will kick ass. If that's what it takes to be free again, will you take me with you? I'll make my three mates, Solvig, Brunhild, and the Welsh woman. I will change her name to Gudrid Thorbjorn's daughter. Gudrid Thorbjorn's daughter, and she gave birth to the first European on American soil. And so Nancy Brown's book, Gudrid, the Far Traveler, I highly recommend it. And if you ever get a chance to take one of Nancy Brown's tours in Iceland, please do so. And please check out her lectures if you ever get a chance. Because she's an excellent lecturer on the period. And so we're going to change our maidens into maybe horse archers or shield maidens. But I will make them real characters from history. I'll change Solveig to Lagerda of Seelen. Well, I take pity on you, darling. So get your Sayaks and let's go. And let's scoot. So we got Brunel. We got some dough. And so we're going to scavenge. No one here wants to join our party. And so we are scavenging stuff off the battlefield because we are low level. We're starting out. All the Christians hate us. We barely have any coin. And so we're scavenging. Like I said, we're level 10, we're level nine. So yeah, I started this campaign like a week ago and I'll be modding this as I go. And so I'll let you guys know every time I play it what, what I have modded and what I have not. I've already started modding character heights, simple stuff. Hello, her old Ain Flayed. She's terrified that we're going to rape her. That's what Vikings did. I'd love to see a Viking reenactment, a real one, you know, where they're, you know, I'm just dying to ask these guys. I'm like, so how do you guys reenact Vikings? I'm dying to know. You guys like throw baby dolls up on swords and stuff like the plastic kind? Sense of humor, guys. Sense of humor. So where's your husband? Elderman Eldred. So he's nearby and I want to get that quest from him to go and burn the robber's hideout to the ground because it's right there. We've already discovered it and we can get a bunch of loot and we can and we can get a bunch of gear. We can get a bunch of gear so we can kick it down to some more of our troops. So Elderman Eldred and you're a pagan. No shit. And your wife's a Christian and your daughter's a Christian too. We're going to have to do something about that. We're going to have to show them the way. Darling, have you accepted the All Father as your Lord and Savior in the name of Thor? You come around Thursday night, you bring a robe, we've got a hammer with your name on it. I heard that you saved Er Saronvold from a whipping. You should have let him learn his lesson in my opinion, you betcha. And so, my friend, do you have a task for us? Yes, there is something you could do for us, Roald Reed. We have heard reports that a group of bandits have established a hideout in this area and have been attacking travelers. You guys know the drill? I'll do it. Let's go remove their heads from their bodies. Kick ass. So how's our troops sitting? Eagle. We're going to leave Brunhild down here because she doesn't have shit. B. 
beta doesn't have shit. Our goatees don't have shit. I'm gonna be changing these goatees too. They're gonna to be wearing wolf fur and they'll have some hatchets. The hornmen will make them look like Frisians. The sailors, I've already troop treed them up to Vikings. The foot pads will do something with them. These angles are gonna cause some problems because my Norsemen want to eat the angles. They want to eat their throats out and they want to drink from their skulls. And we need some bowmen. I want some archers. So our Vikings kick ass. Let's get some more. And see, I spaced again, you guys. You guys, you can't let me space. Come on, you guys got to be my multiple sclerosis warriors. Help me remember this shit. I need to go in and get some sailors. Awesome, awesome. And dude, I think you told me your name's Chris. Dude, I'm looking forward to you. Um, one of you, I forget what you told me your name was. I apologize. Looking forward to watching you play FIFA, man. I need to go down to the port. I can't. Shice. I have to go all the way down to talk to the captain. I can't go right to the shore. You guys, I hope next this time next year, hopefully, my plan, hopefully, this time next year, I'll be streaming from the Eastern Shore, back to the ocean. I can't do mountains no more. I gotta get a four-wheel drive. I'm getting it. I'm gonna get a four-wheel drive wheelchair. No shit. All terrain. I'm gonna get the Vike. I'm not kidding, you guys. I'm not joking. There's a Viking four by four wheelchair it's badass it looks like a four-wheeler it's kick ass i can take that bitch anywhere in the snow in the mud anything and so i want to go live streaming from a mobile cam non-cell phone from here wouldn't that be great i've already i already have a cam attachment for my wheelchair it's bitching so I can go out, I'm planning on going out on the Gettysburg Battlefield here where I live. I live on the Gettysburg Battlefield with my cam attachment and continue to do short history tours, excursions into the past on the battlefield from my wheelchair. Be fun, an impression. I'm a veteran captain who monitors activity at the Port of Bambara. If you're interested in hiring unemployed sailors, yes I am. I want three of them, kick ass. We needed those sailors, now let's get the hell out of here and actually go draw some blood, right? All right, kick ass. Attack the robber's den at dawn. Doesn't get any better than this, right? Oh, by the way, this is modded. This is modded. If you guys ever want, if you guys see me do something or a mod that I've done in here and you want to know where to get it or you want me to send you the script or the text mod for your own games, just send me a message here on Twitch or uh, send me a message on my YouTube channel. So what you're gonna see, you guys probably put this in your own games. When I roll in here, come on you guys, I'm not a fool. I'm not gonna roll into a robber's den with like four of my companions. No, screw that. In real life, I take everybody. Everybody's coming with us. That's how we roll at Quantico. So we're still a shit, right? We're still a Viking. So we can go in and we can sell our shit to these guys or we can be real Vikings. We can take their shit too. So let's go take their shit too. Kick ass. Let's go guys. Follow me. Get the high ground. Yeah, we're taking all of our troops. Because come on guys, if I was rolling up on a crack shack, I'd be taking all my boys too. Did you guys, did I say that out loud? Did I? Publicly on cam? Look at these shits. I was going to play some Forgotten Hope 2 today, so maybe tomorrow I'm going to play some tanks. Some Forgotten Hope 2. Oh, it's time for you to die. Kill. 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 Oh, juicy.
it's weird one thing that's developed and I'm I'm guessing it's a result of multiple sclerosis is some games these days just recently like literally this year give me motion sickness it's weird half-life half-life 2 and mass effect have given me motion sickness no tell worlds warband games viking conquest britain walled uh, lego no tell worlds titles ever give me motion sickness warband never gives me motion sickness but unfortunately since i've gotten multiple sclerosis some games like quake 4 half-life counter-strike have given me motion sickness it's weird I don't know why. Some days they do, some days they don't. Warband never gives me motion sickness with MS. I'm guessing it's MS with multiple sclerosis. So, yep, we got a bunch of goodies. So now we can outfit some of our, our people. Kick ass. So some heavy javelins. We could hook up. Bead, I don't give two shits about him. I think I changed Bead into a Pagan, and I also changed him to Dagfinir, Dagfinir, and I think his last name was Gudridson. Dagfinir Gudridson was a Dane who came with his parents. They settled in East Anglia, and he actually converted. His parents were Pagans, and he became a Christian monk. And so I changed Bede into Dag, I think it's Dagfinir Gudridsen, and I changed him into that historical character, and I changed him into a pagan. So I made him a pagan in the process of converting real historical character, and I threw him into the game. So maybe I'll do that with Bede in this playthrough too. That'd be fun. All right, so... Those say axes are all right, 270, 270, 270, 259, but I want those axes rather than the say axes. I want those axes. Kick ass. We don't need the honey. If you guys are still hanging out, what'd you guys have for dinner? Whenever it was you had dinner, because most of you guys don't live on the east coast of the United States. You guys are all interesting people, too. You enrich my imaginations with visions of where it is that you guys roam. And so, mission accomplished. Let's go back and get some props. Oh, look at these bastards. Just so you know, there's something demonic about Ego. He scrawls strange things in the dirt and mutters to himself the entire time before battle. Well, maybe he has multiple sclerosis. Fearing witchcraft, I asked Eagle about it, and he told me that I should mind my own business, so I had a look at his baggage and found a heretical Odin amulet. And I'm sure this amulet is evil, a thing of the devil. Surely we should definitely get rid of Eagle for the sake of our immortal souls. Oh, man, we are really going to have fun sacrificing him. Eagle is a capable member of this company. He hails the All-Father, as so should you. Good deal. Right on. So, let's see what these robbers want to play with. We don't have any room for loot, so we're not going to attack these guys right off the bat. But we are going to go get our buddy points with the good alderman. Good deal. Well, Harold Rig. Digging that helmet, man. I'd never take it off. Splendid work, Rold. Your audacious attack is the talk of the realm. No doubt there are others like them. We'll soon be back, but for a short while, you have brought this land a small respite. So, we got 14 buddy points with the good Elderman. Good deal. So, what is the realm doing? So, they're going to take the fortress of Ker Karadog. We could, we, I think that that's Welsh. So, let's get the hell out of here. Try to accomplish our goal of getting a ship. Let's get Bruneld. Let's get her some goods. 
let's get her hooked up with some stuff. I'll give her those good ones. It's a 17, that's a good tunic. Good deal. Get you all hooked up, sister. You're gonna be barefoot for a while, darling. Her dress is a 20. Shit, her dress is better. Shit, we'll leave her with the dress for a while. Give her a severe shield. I don't think we have anything else for her unless she wants a boar. The speed on that's a 98, 98, 98. That's it, darling. So you'll stay in the dress for a while there. My frizzy and buttercup. Good deal. All right, she's ready to rock and roll. She's gonna kick some ass. Right, let's see, uh, bead, what do you have, my friend? You've got a hunting knife and a staff. That's no good, that's no good. You know what, that's good for him, he's a priest. He has no shoes, he has no drawers. Do you ever find those characters that you just really don't like them? And you take all their stuff and then you put them in a dress and they send them back out into the world just so you can run into them six months later, right? And they're like in a pub wearing a dress and you're <laughs> calling. So nice to run into you. So we got another Vikinger who wants to get leveled up to a Norse warrior archer. And we leveled up again. No shit. Good deal. Writing, I don't need it. I want my combat weapon skills. We need that. In I hate spending points on inventory management, man. It's such a bummer. I love it when mod designers put in the inventory for your companions, and then you can access a group inventory. That's, that's so nice. I hate spending my hard-earned points on inventory. It sucks. So the athletics will kick that up. Our persuasion's maxed out. Looting, seeking two, four, that's four ships. Yeah, so that's good for now. Our throwing, I never ever have a really high throwing skill. So this is gonna be a nice challenge, a nice change, I should say because I, I don't usually do a lot of throwing. So when I do, let's do it up. So, well, we'll get more loot, right? That pole arms, let's get that pole arms up. Rolls looking good. Now let's get up to Isera, complete this ridiculous quest. Try to get some more damn troops. We probably can't, we can't get any troops in uh, Katraeth. There's a great battle here. There's a great battle here. Great battle here. I think, uh, Battle of Katraeth. I can't remember the exact year, guys. I want to say it's early 7th century or 6th century. Mid to late 6th century. You guys know the battle. I think Taliesin wrote about it, yeah. So, the Dane Law is headed north. They're going to take Ker Caradog, which is up by Edinburgh. Awesome, man, I got some burgers too. I finally got to the store last night. I only get out of here maybe twice a month. And so my friend came last night, we had a storm, and uh, so I got to go to the market, and so I got some hamburgers too. I can't wait. Rock and roll. Dude, man, I'll tell you what, brother. I come down there where you live, man, you got some good food down there. Carne asada, brother. 
Hell yeah. El gato burrito, tortuga. Bueno. Some good food down in Brazil, man. Ooh. Yummy. And you're eating a burger. <laughs> you have a delicious Brazilian food. <laughs> Boy, I could hear, by the way, when it was raining, when it was, I could hear the rain on your stream. It was really, really raining. It was really raining. We could hear that. And that was cool watching you surf for those mods. It's nice just hanging out and chatting sometime, you know? That was nice, man. And the, uh, showing me the horticulture. Did you know I bought, I purchased back in 1993, my wife and I purchased, um, I think we purchased 10 acres of the rainforest in Brazil so that it could not be cut down. And so we did that as an initiative through the uh, Garcia Foundation. And so we purchased land in the rainforest so that it could not be harvested. I don't want those angles. I'll take them anyway, but I really don't want them. Adgafreen. I think Adgafreen is the model that's messed up. It's either Agarfreen or Dinbear. It's one of these where I rolled in here and it's got the long fort outside of the palisade and it should be inside. So, six years, guys. Come on, you haven't fixed it yet. What's up? Daryl has to go in and fix it for you. I think I need a free copy of Viking Conquest. But I'll tell you what, this is the game I always wanted. Every time I played Warband 10 years ago, every time I played Britain Walda, I wished I was playing this. And then they made it. Just like Britain Walda says, what's Britain Walda team's motto? Do you remember their motto? The Britain Walda team's motto is something like, you want to go into the past and we will make it for you. Yeah, and they do. A friend of mine made 457 AD, which is a prequel to Britain Walda, and it's really cool. That farmland, I'm not touching that. Northmen, and so we're not attacking them because I want to be buddies with them. But if these guys are there, that tells me that there's a long fort here along the river. And we can score some really good chain mail. We can score some really, really good stuff. But we need to get to Isera. And we need to find this murderer. Who do we have here, y'all? Uba. Uba Lothbroxen. He died by the sea. He met Uhtred and Uhtred brought him to his knees. That's such a good historical fiction when Uhtred defeats Uba. And Uba, like a good Lothbroxen, did not die in his bed. I'm not planning on dying in my bed either. I'm going to be up on a mountain. So, we have to go and find this murderer. Rewallin' the Red. Rewallin' Raud. Rewallin' Raud. Smutty, what's up, bud? What's up, dude? What's up, my friend? For the upcut, I'll hold on. I'll show you why. Un momento, senor. Here we go. Wow, the wind's really blowing out there. My bird feeders are blowing all over. I'll show you why, my friend. I was gonna change it to Putty Schmickle. Dude, your wrestling stream was fun. I had a blast watching you wrestle. That was bitchin'. 
I had so much fun watching you wrestle, dude. That was fun watching you play that. That was really cool. That was bitching. It was like its own TV show. You're wrestling the WWE smut. That was I was it was like watching a TV series. It was like this whole soap soap opera drama between all the wrestlers. It was bitching. And when you went to Japan and you were fighting those guys with the blood on his face, that was pretty fun. I like that. So let me see if I can find this what I'm looking for, you guys. I'll show you why I changed my name. So I want to get involved in this, my friends. So check that out. That right there. So we have multiple sclerosis month coming up and I'm going to be streaming for multiple sclerosis. And it's one of the primary reasons that I got on Twitch was for multiple sclerosis. And so I'm looking at this these teams and these great people who are doing these good things, okay? And so that's what I'm looking at doing, and it's one of the reasons that I changed my name. Plus, I got a bunch of creepy teenagers calling me daddy. I've already got a daughter, and Smutty's my pal. <laughs> So that's one of the reasons that I got on here for on Twitch. But dude, I love your WWE stream. That was fun. So rock and roll. You don't like the name? Interesting. You're saying interesting. You don't like the name? It was going to either be MS Warlord or it was going to be Honky Dong, son of Donkey Kong. Honky Dong, son of Donkey Kong, or Amish Sausages, Amish Sausages, Amish Sausages, Amish Sausages, Amish Sausages, Amish Sausages. Amish Sausages. Do you know Smutty, every day Amish folks go past my house on the buggies and they poop, they leave the poop in the road. My mother used to go out and yell at them, don't clean up the poop out of the road. So rock and roll, dude, I hope you had a good day, Smud. I enjoyed that wrestling stream very much, that was a blast. Those guys were nuts. Buzz, that was cool, that was fun. So guys, back in the game, let's try to get something accomplished, huh? So this is the guy we're looking for. This, these are the Vikings you're looking for. Let's go find this bastard. He's probably right here behind the house. I bet she's behind this shack. Yeah, he's back here in the bush, isn't he? Yeah, he's right there. Shit box. Yeah, you. What do you want? What do you want, Viking looking man? I am looking for a murderer by the name of Roland the Red. You are uglier than his description, but you might be him. I don't understand, sir. I never killed anyone. I think you've got the wrong man. Then drop your sword. If you are innocent, you have nothing to fear. We will go now and talk to your neighbors, and if they verify your story, I'll go on my way. Open Yemeni. Yavod. I am not going anywhere, friend. You're going to have to fight for your silver today. No problem. I just need your bitch skull to drink out of. 
Oh. Eat it. Oh. Eat it. Oh. Hello, local leader. He doesn't like us anymore because we just... We rid the village of the murderer. Don't you think they'd be grateful? They're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that Jimmy's cousin was a murderer. And here you come along and you're looking for him. You've even got a warrant. And he could have killed any one of us. These guys should be thanking me. They should be giving me a free pig. I just rid their village of a murderer. I know they're all related. That's a little weird. But, you know, it's a different era. Cousins are cousins. So that's that, guys. Mission accomplished. So who did we have to do that for? I think we had to do that for... Jarl Halfdan. And he is probably... So Alt Klute is going to take back Karaged. And when Alt Klute does take back Karaged, look at they have no troops. They're depleted. He's got 139. He's got 38. He's got 43. And as soon as they take Karaged and then they garrison it, they're going to weakly garrison it. I could take Karaged. But I don't want to ally myself with a king either. So we need to head towards Edinburgh and hook up with Jarl Halfdan and complete our quest. I will drink from your skull. Do you want the drink from your skull, Smutty? Just for you, pal. Just for you, pal. The drink from the skull. Dude, my on-screen, on-game chat still isn't working since Friday, and neither are my alerts. My alerts aren't working either. I've sent Twitch a few support tickets. I'm not expecting that I'm going to hear back from them. After I made these really cool alerts, I mean, come on. I will drink from your skull! I mean, that's just the best, and I can't even use them. They'll work for me. I can click the button, but I have people stopping in to say, hey, my stuff's not working on Twitch, but I want you guys to know that I can see your chat. I have two monitors, and so I have my Twitch studio open, so I can see you guys chatting and stuff. Smutty, the solution? The solution is that I sit down for a day and drink some coffee, and I get all of my Streamlabs OBS and Stream Elements all set up with that software. Because I use Twitch Studio and it's too buggy. I've had too many issues with it in the last five months. And the problem is, is that there's no technical support. They just don't support their software. It's unfortunate because I like the Twitch Studio. I like Twitch. I like the Twitch network. I like the whole idea of it. I like the software. I just wish the software worked. The software is very easy to use. So I, I and I've got all the uh, stream labs and everything in OBS and I've looked at it and I've put it together and I've configured stuff, but it still has a learning curve and it's just a little tough for me some days when I, I can't concentrate very well. You know, if I had a friend like you who lived nearby could like roll over and just help me set it up for like an hour because I'll space out, you know, and that's, that's the issue. So MS Society just went live on Twitch. But anyway, dude, let's get back in, back in the... Oh, right. I just wanted to show you the alerts. I spend all that time setting up these scenes. All right. I spend all this time setting up these streams for like Lord of the Rings or my Lord of the Rings Be Right Back stream or my Viking Conquest scenes. And then what happens is I have issues with the Twitch app and I spent all this time putting this stuff together because everything you see, I do not pay graphic designers. I make all my own graphics and everything. And so I put all this together myself and then Twitch doesn't work and it, and it bumps me out. I put all that time and effort into it. But the real adding insult to injury is that they don't get back to me in technical support at all. They'll, I've gotten two technical two automated responses since October. That's that's a recipe for failure in any corporation. If I had a technician, I used to have 140 employees. If I had a technician who didn't get back to a client, that technician would be gone the next day. 
without a second thought. And that, my friends, is Corporate Management 101, and that's how you put a number one corporation in your industry on the map in this hemisphere. You know, put up with that shit. You get back to your clients because they are your bread and butter, period. In any event, I will run my mouth all day if you let me. So let's get back to the game. So who do we have here? They are coming to protect their property, and I need to find Jarl Halfdan, the king, Ragnar's son. So, Ronvold, where is Harold and Halfdan? Because we need to go complete this quest and then get another one, because I want to make friends with the Dane Law. So, he doesn't need my help. Bummer. So, where is Halfdan? He's at Dinner Pass, so he's coming this way. Good deal. Let's go complete our quest so we can mosey. And there he is now. So let's go finish our quest. Jarl Halfdan. I heard that you saved my vassal Hersa Ronvold from likely defeat. Yeah, we did. We almost, we got our asses handed to us too. We lost half our men. We barely made it. We barely survived that fight last night. I think it was last night or the night before. We played Lord of the Rings last night. And so we have completed our quest. It's blood money, you can keep it. My reputation is negative 19. I need to get a 60, negative 60 reputation. We're scouting for the enemy around Karagad. We have heard reports that the enemy is in the area. I'm not accompanying the marshal because I can do greater deeds. Karagad, on that note, this week, I really want to put together a new Britain Walda campaign. And I'm going to play a character from history called Marsha Trin from Lloydus Leeds from West Yorkshire in the late sixth century who was an exiled young prince who escaped death. And in this historical fiction, he will come back to reclaim his kingdom. And that's history, folks. And so I'm thinking about doing that with Britain Walda. And I've done that before. And the reason I mentioned Regid and why that struck a chord is because Marchad Trin and his father, who were the royalty of Leeds, Lloydus at the time in West Yorkshire, were originally sons of Regid. And that is 550 to 650 AD is when that went down. And his whole family was murdered. And he escaped and no one ever knew what happened to him. So in any event, what are you and your men doing? Scouting for the enemy around Karagad. And so they are besieging it. But we're going to go north and we're going to cause some trouble. Let's get up to, we'll stop at dinner pass, get some grub. If we need any food, we might not need any food. Get rid of that junk. We will get some points, some buddy points for dropping off those battle trophies. What are you playing, yeeps? I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I would say that yeeps like the European battlefield, World War I. Yeps, yeps one. Brother, my name's Daryl, by the way. You said you're playing League. What kind of League were you playing? League of Legends. I'll have to watch you play that. I don't think I've ever seen that. I've never, I mean, I know what it is. I've seen the advertisements, but I have never, I've never seen anyone play it. And my friend Smutty here, he plays games that I haven't played either. I like watching him play Black Black Sails, Black Flag. And um, I always confuse that with the pirate TV show. Yeah, but you guys, I'm so glad you guys play, uh, I'm so glad you guys play different stuff than I do because I find it interesting because it's new. So, how are we doing on meat? Do these guys have any food? They have some vegetables. We don't have any vegetables, so let's buy some vegetables. 
60 Paningas. You can have our junk. Two, we'll let him keep it. Pay what you can. See ya. We'll take your pigs and trade. I wish we could do more bartering in this. Barter is a good policy. Let's see if these guys are pissed at us yet. These guys are real shits too. Oh, I'm so glad he didn't cut our throats. I love his name. I've always liked his name. Echo Map Rune. Echo Map Rune. So tomorrow, you guys, introduce yourselves to everyone you meet as Echo Map Rune. Sepanejikwa, Echo Map Rune. So let's sell the stuff. Kara Dog. Kara Dog. I'm going to go to court, change my name to Kara Dog. I'm going to be bitching. It's, it's, we are, this is my favorite part of the campaign because we're just really starting out. We're low level, you know, so it's a struggle. It's a challenge, you know. We're not strong, we're not powerful, so everything is still a challenge. When my characters get too strong, and I get too much gold, and I have a bunch of ships, the game starts to get boring because it's too easy. So this is my favorite part. So one of the things that I have implemented into this is some of the scripts from the Balance Mod 12.0. And one of the things that that gentleman created in his mod, in Balance Mod 12.0, is he made the um, the Renown game very slow, and I like that. It, it makes the game last longer, and so it's very hard for us to achieve Renown, um, and I love it. It's great. It makes the game last so much longer. I don't like getting powerful, and we're already level 10. I wish we were only level 5. So the campaign's going great. We're making some friends. We're cutting some throats. We are, um, you know, we're, we're burning down churches. I mean, things are going well. You know, we've been eating some priests and we've got a bunch of nuns and they're rowing our ships for us. And we caulked the planks of our ships with the hair of, you know, the elderly because we're Vikings and that's what we did. And we'll eat the young. Later, we'll eat the young. It'll be fun. We've got horned helmets for Halloween. That's going to be the best part. So, my angle peasants, and bead, it's time for you to take a walk, my friend. So, I'd like to ask you something. I suppose that you know that I aspire to be king of this land. Would you then support my cause? Of course, I'm just lying through our teeth to be telling him that we are good Christians, so that he will go and spread the word of the second coming of Odin. Of course I am. We are nothing but instruments of Odin. Very good. You do that in the name of the All-Father and the ravens will not pluck your eyeballs out. All right. So he's going to serve his purpose. He's going to go spread the word. The wicked word. And you guys, the music that I modded into the game that you're listening to is Danheim and Paleo Wolf. And you can find them on YouTube, and they're excellent, so subscribe to them. All right, guys. So we can sell these battle trophies and get some buddy points with Edinburgh and some coins. So we got 500 each for those, 500 for that and a thousand for that. And your relationship with Edinburgh has improved and we got one renown. I think we need like a 50 renown. So let's get rid of some of this junk, right? I'll keep that one good tunic. And we also need to get some more timber and we need to get some more tools. We have 20,000 pennings gold. So we need to think about building a fortress, a fort, 
I should say. And so... Brunhild... Brunhild has what? An axe, some javelins, a shield. She ain't got shit. So let's see what we can do for her. We can get her some boots. You know, we should just scavenge the shit off the battlefield. But uh, there's no good gloves to get. There's some good boots, but I'm not kicking down 750 for them. I'll get them off the battlefield. We need to check and see if we have any companions in the pub before we sell all that stuff. So, let's go to the pub, let's see who's around, stroll through the town. Un momento, my friends. Right. So I got some cheap Bluetooth headphones so my f sound will stop cutting out. And these headphones have not cut out on me yet, so good deal. My little earbuds were cutting out too much, man. They were really ticking me off. They're convenient and they're small and they're light and everything, but the sound kept cutting out on the stream. You guys know, you're watching the stream, my sound cut out, I'd reboot my game. So, last night when I went out to the market with my friend gave me a ride, Grateful Ed gave me a ride, I picked these up. You know the pain, brother? Right on. Macadeo. Hola, welcome. How are you doing, my friend? Thanks for the follow. Yes, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I hope your day's a good one, man. Awesome. Let's get to the pub. Viking chicken dance. Right. So I don't get out of the house much, and yesterday when I got out of the house, it was for the first time this month that I got out and got into town. So I saw all of the changes since New Year's down in Gettysburg, and the one strange change, since we're at the pub, we're at the tavern, is that down on the square in the middle of town, they have the beer outside the store. So people drive up on the curb, and a young person brings them the beer to the car. So that works, heck man. Roads, curbside beer pickup. No shit. So Clovis, do you want to join our war band now? Because we could use a great big brute like you, sir. When Wolf of Wessex died, Aethelbald, his eldest son, married Judith, his widow. True story. Gosh, I thought that was such a bastardization of history. The Vikings TV show, did you see that shit? where Alfred's brother abdicates the throne. What a load of horse shit. His brother died in battle. I was it, uh... I'll look at the town on the map. It's crazy, man. Hollywood just changes history. It's nuts. It's like saying Abraham Lincoln and Napoleon planned the Battle of Little Bighorn with Attila the Hun in Paris in 1437. That's Hollywood history. So, who do we have here? We have Clovis. Let's go fight, Clovis. You want to join us? Now I have some money to hire you. I've offered my sword to a few lords in these lands, but I find 
more often than not, that they ask me to run messages or train peasants or some other job not fit for a gentleman. Oh, I can read your English just fine. I'm sorry if my English is terrible. I speak English just not very well. And nice to meet you, man. Thanks for stopping in to hang out. Don't be a stranger. Don't be shy. Please chat. I can see you guys' chat on my other monitor. My on-screen chat should be working below the webcam, but it's it's not working, so that's Twitch. So I'll give you the... Uh, what you should have gotten was the Twitch alerts. My Twitch alerts aren't working. I apologize, but thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. So that should have been a follow. Every drink from your skull. Like that. But it's not working. So hopefully this week I will have it working correctly. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's go and get into some adventures and some fights and let's go raid something. We haven't had any good fights at all tonight. I'm boring the shit out of you guys. 300 Peningas. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Clovis. Can I get any troops? No one here wants to join our party. Unbelievable. These guys are a bunch of haters. What's up? That's like the best shield. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you square dancing in the cornfields? Come on. Yes, Kingdom Scold. So, can we try to woo a lady for a few dollars? Who? See, now this will tell us what lady is here at Edinburgh. Alof. Alof is here. We don't want to romance Alof. So, we'll leave her be. Sing for me and my men. Good deal. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's go start some fights. Let's go get into some trouble. So we got a script warning. Let's see what we can give Clovis. He's going to earn his keep. Clovis should be a badass. And since I'm going to ditch Colin, I'm going to take Colin stuff. I'm going to turn Colin into a... Doggone it, I can't remember the character's name. Stayappa. Stayappa Snortor. Stayappa Snortor. I'll change, I will change Colin into Stay Up a Snortor for Bernard Cornwell's Uhtred Saxon Tales. I'll change him into Stay Up a Snortor so he'll be a big badass Saxon Lord and I'll put him under the banner of King Alfred. That'll be good. So I'm gonna raid his crap because I don't like Colin. He's not particularly my favorite. So he's going to get that Anglo-Saxon stuff and we will give, yeah, we'll leave him with that shield. And we'll leave him with that shit. He's already got good stuff. He can have that tunic. Because actually I'm going to give him the Anglo-Saxon tunic. Good deal. So we'll swap his stuff out with Clovis. And you guys, sorry if I'm boring you. Apologies. So let's get him set up with the good Gambeson. Kick ass. So what do you got? A spear? You got some bent throwing spears. You got a bent heavy spear. We'll get him an axe soon. And so we'll kick down the Saxon tunic to the Saxon. Kick ass. So, Colin. I should put him in a dress and send him on his way. Give him the Saxon tunic. He's set. Yep. Good deal. So we can't get any troops in Edinburgh. Dumainen is raided. Soldvig, I don't know where she is. Let's go to Dunbritan and see what's going on in Dunbritan. Connacht and the tribe. So where are we sitting with...
We've got 25 Renown. We need to pick up that mercenary contract. I want to get to Norway. Norway's a good contract. I want to make friends with Kettle Flat Enough and King Eric. I want to get to Frisia. We've got so much stuff to see. we got so many adventures to, to undertake. It's going to be bitching. We're going to have so much fun. Nice, fresh Viking conquest campaign. Good. Oh, I've read all the books. I love the TV show, Last Kingdom. I am a huge Bernard Cornwell fan. I've read all of his books. All of the Uhtred books, I have read all of the Uhtred books three times. They're my favorite book series next to Tolkien. I love, I love The Last Kingdom is good. I love Uhtred's stories. I have another Viking Conquest campaign that I am modding. And it is an Uhtred of Bebenberg campaign where I is just like the story. I'm my goal is to take back Bebenberg, Bambra, Uhtred in this campaign. I have another game that I'm playing, and it's the whole Uhtred campaign. All of my companions, all of my com companions, I changed all of the companions to characters from the books. So he has Father Pyrlig, he has Baoka, his priest, he has Brida, he has um, Steapus Nortor. He has all the characters from the books that I modded into my game and my Uhtred playthrough. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. I love The Last Kingdom. I love Bernard Cornwell's books. I, I, I would love to party with that guy. With Bernard Cornwell, I'd like to have a I'd like to go to a barbecue and drink some beers with him. The stuff that guy writes, man, he's gotta be a good time. So these sailors we can turn into weekenders. I'll I'll stream that sometime on the weekends, probably my Uhtred campaign. And while I'm streaming it, I can play the audio books like um, The Pagan Lord. Pagan Lord is one of my favorite books. And Lords of the North, um, where he goes north and he's playing the un the undead horsemen. It's, it's so good in the books. The audio books are fabulous. I can't see as well as I used to, so I listen to the audio books. are great. I love them. Those, are, those have got to be my favorite book series. That's the only book series I've ever read more than twice. And I listen to them all the time. But I'm talking, 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 talking. And so we want to score a ship. We want to set up our fortress and raid some monasteries. We're going to raid every monastery in Scotland. It's going to be great. And so this fortress, this fortress, Dunbritann. Amazing. This fortress was never, ever taken. It was never, ever, ever conquered in history. Except perhaps by the Uy Umer. Uy, and I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly because I don't speak Gaelic, but Uy Umer, my friend John would know the correct pronunciation, came and captured this fortress. This fortress is only ever captured by one person ever in history. And scholars believe that that one person was in fact actually Ivar the Boneless, who never ever stepped foot in Russia. Ivar was here conquering land in the Irish Sea. So let's get some sailors. Eight sailors kick ass. So this fortress is on my bucket list. This fortress is in my top 10 bucket list before I die that I would like to come here and see this fortress. This unconquerable fortress. For hundreds and hundreds of years, no one could conquer this impenetrable fortress. And you can see why. Until Ymir, Ivar came along, Ivar conquered this fortress. So bitchin', we may indeed capture this fortress. Because it's one of my favorites. This is a bitchin', bitchin', bitchin' siege. The siege, the siege is excellent. The siege is so much fun. It's so tough. You come up to, sh you land your ships on the ocean, 
and then you have to go all the way up this vast hill to take that key. It's such a good, such a good siege. It's so much. I, I recorded the last time I sieged this, and I believe I put it on my YouTube channel. And it was a bitch. It was a bitch and siege. And there's nobody here, so we wasted our time. So let's go north and let's cause some trouble. How are we doing with our morale? Our morale is high. We've got 68 troops. We're really hurting. We need to get to. We need to get back to Norway. In Denmark and we need to get back to Norway we need to get back to Denmark and we need to recruit some troops and how much can I get for this ale we've been good finally we've been lugging this ale around the country for like a month because I just I'm not finding a good price for it but at this point I'll take 200 coins for it because we've been lugging it around for too long Good, good, good. How much is that wool? 386. So if we cruise around the Irish Sea, up the western shore and the eastern shore, we can score a bunch of wool for about 25 coin for the very small villages on the coast of Ireland and Scotland. And then we could turn around and we could swing that for about three, 400 coin. And so that's the one thing that I do like to trade is the wool. And so, my friends, let's go. I think I'm going to make a pizza tonight. I had a salami sandwich earlier. Welcome to the random, my friends. Welcome to the random. And so this is a bitchin' fortress to take. Let's go find ourselves a juicy monastery, right? And we'll get into Schoon. We'll get into Schoon, and we will go see the Stone of Destiny at Schoon before the Caledonians want to cut our throats because we're going to raid their monastery, and they're going to hate us. So let's get into their cities and check them out first before we raid them. The immersion on that must be amazing. That's the thing too, and that's why I change a lot of stuff. Like, um, I have a Viking Conquest Overhaul mod that I've been working on for a few years, and I call it Fury of the Northmen. And so I've actually gone through genealogy and family trees and everything. I've corrected so much of it, so much of it for the historical immersion, because I know these people's stories, and so. I want to interact with these real historical characters. Thorsten Raud, Thorsten the Red, um, Rondvald Estensen, Sigurd the Mighty, okay, Sigurd Estensen, and Olaf the White. You know, I like the real characters from history. For example, in this game, what you guys will see in the next couple of weeks is I will make Princess Gita, um, Eric's daughter, married to King Harold, as she really was in history. And so Rondvald, I will make him a Norseman not a Dane, because he should be in Norway. He should be up by Ordolin. Um, he shouldn't be in the Dane law at all. And so I'll make changes like that, and I'll let you guys know what I've changed um, for historical accuracy. And tell some stories along the way. Some good, 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 fun stories, man. Some good, fun stories about these people and what they did. Crazy shit. Rondvald, the half-drowned son, the half-drowned Jarl, the half-drowned king. Oathman to the Golden Wolf. So, prison. Schoon. Where are we going? Schoon, 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 furry cows. Furry burgers. Townsman. I want a pet pig. I can get a service animal for my disabilities, so I want to get a wild boar. I want to get a boar. You know how people, they have a service dog? I want to get a service boar, okay? Call her Bertha, with a harness, a pink harness, on a leash, a big boar. Going down the street, that'd be bitching. 
Can you see those kids? They go to the other side of the street. They see me and my boar coming. Be awesome. So the weaponsmith, we don't need to talk to her. But I do need to talk to a captain if there is one. And I mean, this is just a river. We're not at a port. So... There was a, a campaign that I was playing before my before I did, before I blew up my last computer. When I blew up my last computer, I was playing a campaign, um, a Caledonian, a Pictish Alba campaign, and I was portraying Malbrit Tusk. Malbrit Tusk was a warlord in 880, 890 AD. Malbrit Tusk, and they called him Malbrit Tusk because he had protruding teeth. And he was roaming around as a warlord, a Caledonian, a pick, up near what is now Dornoch in Scotland. And some of you guys may already know these stories anyway, but let's go in and see who is around. Pick the spearmen, Kingdom Bards. Tiarna Dungal, Ardiarna High Prince, Ardiarna High Prince Dungal. My name is Rolt Rig at your service. No, no, no. We're not dealing with you. I'm looking for Jarl Thorgild. Man. See? He's like a good priest, he's drinking all the ale. If it wasn't for those Christian monks, we would have no good homebrew to drink. Those Christian monks are single-handedly responsible for good ale. So you guys, that's it. Nothing going on here. I was hoping to... I was hoping to run into another companion. Who do we have? Alchu? No, we have a wandering bard. Bitch and tats, dude. Right on. Duntaro. In our other playthrough, we are the Lord of Duntaro and of the Hebrides of Stjornavegar. In this game, in the Hebrides, they have Bjarnaroy. But Bjarnaroy was a very small Scandinavian, very Norse specifically. Bjarnaroy was actually a very small Norse settlement up on a very small island off the coast of Iceland. Bjarnaroy was not in the Hebrides. In this game, in Viking Conquest, when you see up in the Hebrides, uh, you see Bjarnaroy. That's actually was called Stjornavegar at this time. And so we have Constantine. Great King Constantine. Man, he pulled some shit, this guy. He pulled some shit all over here. He's pulling strings. He ruled the roost. But we're going to get to sell Rigmanade, see if there's any companions there, and then we're going to get back and we're going to raid that monastery. These Some of these monasteries are really paying off. I hit a monastery a couple days ago. I got like 8,000 coin from the monastery. I couldn't believe it. Hey, man, sleep well, rest well, and thanks for saying hey, and thanks for stopping in. And if you stream, I'll definitely I will follow all you guys. All you guys who follow me, I'll follow you back. And if you guys are streaming, I'm usually chilling, and I definitely like to watch to see what you guys play. This is running pretty damn good tonight. Nobody's around, man. So let's go get rich. We can go down to the port and we can get some uh Oh, look at the sky. This is what the sky looked like today. We get a snowstorm coming. We have another snowstorm coming. There's a ton of snow outside. But this is what the sky looked like today, so I know we got another snowstorm coming. It's going to be bitching. Where's our sailor man? You guys, we need to find some shield walls, man. I'm probably boring the shit out of you guys running around here. Two sailors. 
Let's go to this monastery. Let's cause some trouble. Right. So next month I'll be changing my Twitch name to Honky Dong or Amish Sausages, Amish Sausages, Amish Sausages, Amish Sausages. So let's pillage the monastery. We need some coin. My guys need some blood. They're hungry. They need some Scottish monk flesh. Hmm. <coughs> Long bottom leaf. Gollum. Gollum. <coughs> Gollum. Man, why do these monks always have to live on a hill? To be closer to the Lord. Go, jump, 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 jump. Come on, Olympic Viking. We're so tough. We're so bad. We're the toughest of the tough. We're like picking on a bunch of monks, right? All right, we got some grub. Good deal. See ya. I wish we could get some cows. We should get a ton of ale. Yeah. Let the hate begin. The Scots are going to hate us. Constantine's going to want our head because we're raiding his monasteries. Petras. Petras. So where are we sitting? We got a ton of crap, right? We still got some room. Let's go hit another monastery. We've got Petrus. We've got some lumber. We can get some lumber to build our fortress. And we will probably build our fort here on the Isle of Skye. The Isle of Skye, I think there's 400 people live on the Isle of Skye. And you could rent a old black house, they're called black houses, here in Skye for less than $1,000 American. With COVID-19, the issue is just getting there and staying there. And so Bjarneroy, Bjarneroy is actually a tiny, 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 was, I should say was, a tiny little settlement way the hell up here on a little island. It wasn't down here at all. It wasn't where Lewis says. This was called Stjorna Vega at the time. So, Petrus, because if we hit Petrus, I'm also going to want to get up here. But what we can do is also go visit Sieg Trigger, Sieg Trigger Everson. And so we can do that. We can go visit Sieg Trigger. We can't probably go get rid of any of the stuff in Schoon. They're not going to let us in. They're going to be hating us. We might even get attacked by the king. And if Constantine attacks us, we're dead meat. Yeah, he's got 550 troops. He'd already be drinking. Oh, look at the schoon. Schoon has 666 troops. 666 troops in there. I'm not so sure we should go in there. You turn it upside down, it's a 999. Your luck totally changes for the better. So we can go in here and we we so we we pillage their met we pillage their monastery. And then we sell them their shit back. I love it. I love this racket. This is the best. 
And so what are you going to get? 184 for these? What a ripoff. What a total ripoff. I can't believe it. You see in this? They don't want to give a shit for this. It's unbelievable. Ah. Uh, that's just nothing for that ale. I want more for the ale. He's got a tool kit. Let's get those tools. Anybody, anybody who you got? Ransom broker. We've got eight monks to sell you to man the oars of your ships. 700 for eight months. So shit, they're worth less than a hundred. Surprising, I mean, they can read and everything. Next monastery. Let's head south. I wanted to cause some trouble up here. Let's find a Scottish Lord to fight. They've got to be being attacked by Norway. They've got to be. They should be at war with the Norse. Yeah, we're going to make enemies out of the Scots. We're going to make enemies out of Wessex. Yeah, these guys are too big and too tough. These guys will kick our ass. If I find some weak, weak little lord who has like 70 men, so we're on equal terms, we'll take them on. We'll start a fight with them. We haven't sworn an oath to anybody. We are totally freelancers. Going a Viking. So here we are. That's where I thought we were. No shit. So you're next. Kill the man, kill the elves, keep the gold for ourselves. button. I hate when that happens. Die. Die. Die, Mount Burger. We need some shield wall action, huh, guys? I think so. Oh, we're so tough. We're so bad. Picking out a bunch of monks, right? We need shield wall, guys. We need a shield wall. Shield wall, shield wall, shield wall, shield wall, shield wall. We got a bunch of goods. Look at that. We're almost filled up. We got some good treasure. Kick ass. Let's go. Let's go meet Sieg Trigger, and we'll see what the Irish are up to. Good deal. Go take a break over here in Dunbaity. This should be Ekelsbaki. This is where Dornock is. Dornock is right in here. And so this is where Sigurd the Mighty, Sigurd Aistensen, Sigurd Aistensen and Maldbrigtusk Mold, were fighting at this time, about five years from where we are now. And there was a place here called Ekelsbaki, Sigurd's How. And somewhere here, 
in this area is where Sigurd Eistensen's great hoard, and this is where he was buried, and it's a mystery. No one has ever found Sigurd's actual mound where Sigurd the Mighty, the first Jarl of or the Orkneys, or I'm sorry, the second Jarl of the Orkneys, is buried. But he is buried here, and that would be the Indiana Jones find of the century. No shit. Wouldn't that be awesome to find that? Sigurd's burial here? So back in the day, this was called Ekelsbaki. So that's that. Indiana Jones should find Sigurd's burial spot. Wouldn't that be awesome? And with the technology that we have today, with the technology that we have today, soon you guys will be able to go into buried ancient tombs and see what they look like and walk around inside them underneath the earth in virtual reality from your living rooms without an archaeologist ever having to break soil. We are going to be able to examine artifacts in 3D using technology looking down into the soil without ever having to disturb the tomb. And you'll be able to see this and experience it and go into these tombs in 3D virtual reality and we already have this technology. Isn't that going to be awesome? You can go into an archaeological dig for the first time in 3D virtual reality with an archaeologist. They're not even breaking ground. It's fantastic. I am my best favorite viewer. <laughs> you guys, thanks so much for stopping in if you stopped in to say hey. So, yep, we got a couple of monasteries. We got three monks. We're up to 70 troops. We're still super weak. We're like level nine. We've got 70 decent troops that are slowly leveling up. We're at Dunbeatty, a.k.a. Ekelsbaki in real history. So, let's take a walk around this amazing fortress. Almost pizza time, my friends. Whoa. So I can't ask these guys where their lord is. We'll have to change that because it'd be nice to ask these guys hey where's your lord i think they has to be inside the hall yeah so he's close to dun Bertan. he's either coming or going he's either coming from ireland or he's going to ireland and so we'll head south anyway yep Go to the top. The Reeve. Yep, this is so bitchin'. <laughs> if any of you have ever been in one of these, chime in and say hey. Have any of y'all ever been to Scara Bray or the Ring of Brodgar? If you have, I'd sure like to hear from you. Say hey, share. All right, you guys, this is so bitchin'. So I started watching War of the Worlds last night, but it is a very different version. I had never even heard of it, but it's War of the Worlds, but it takes place in 1905, and it was a, looks like a British series from like three years ago. I think it's a, 
what do you call it, a TV miniseries. It's like three episodes. That looks interesting. Uh, so this guy doesn't want to rap. Hagalam. So that's that, guys. And so, my friends, I have to take a two-minute break. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, I am back. Mic check, mic check. I'm a sausages, I'm a sausages, I'm a sausages. <sighs> Just needed to take a break in the can for a minute. And you guys, all you guys who stopped in tonight, man. Drusus, Macadeo, 405, Sturban Power, Mustafa, Texugo, Mascarado. All you guys, thanks for stopping in, man. Zero subs, Gavin, PK, Mateus, Budokan, Moko, Loco, Lolo, Ezel22, Collier, Manoile, FK67, Nakazaki2000, Sankaran4, Uger Mama, Stupan Torhebele, Yeps, Thomas Capuso, Captain Two Sticks, Warband, 8 Bit Swami, Lower Human Horn, Lone Wolf, Queenie, and Gray Skull. Never Fear, Queenie is here. And King Penguin, Yazer, Sloppy Floppy Guy, Sour Biscuit, my friend, Wasabi. And where is. There he is. My friend, Smutty. Love them wrestling games. So I'm taking a quick break. So did you guys want to watch me? Um, hey, brother. Yeah, man. I enjoyed watching your wrestling, dude. I, that was Your wrestling stream was one of the funnest streams that I've watched since I've been on Twitch. That was really cool. I'd never seen that. I was just taking a quick break, dude. I had to go to the can. I didn't know I'd been on for... Uh, I've been on for almost three hours. Heck, I didn't even know. So how was your day, Smud? Did you play any games today? And if you did, what did you play? And I'm sorry, dude, if you're you're trying to chat and you're also playing. If, I hope I'm not interrupting, my friend. I don't know what's up with the chat on my Twitch channel, but it's really got me irked. Because I like seeing the chat on the screen. And then my alerts don't work and that bums me out because I spend time working on that stuff. So I wish it worked. Not really sure what I'm going to have for dinner, but I'm going to keep watching War of the Worlds 1905. It is really neat. I just finished watching The Expanse, and The Expanse is a bitch in sci-fi series. It's one of the best sci-fi series I've ever seen, and now I've started the books. Hello, hello, Smud.
I'll tell you what, man, Mission accomplished so far. I've been meeting some good gamers and some good people and some interesting people and getting some socialization and coming on Twitch in the middle of the day and just hanging out with people and they're showing me their world and they're showing me their towns and where they live and their culture and their history and their music and God, it's like, it's just excellent, man. Technology in the world and interaction and socialization. I'll tell you what, with every downside, there's always an upside. The downside is great illness, isolation, COVID-19. And as much as that may cause isolation, at the same time, it can bring people closer together with something like technology, like live streams. So I said recently, the downside is a great medical struggle, but the upside is it brings people closer together. It does indeed. Ah, long bottom leave time. I kicked my frame rates down a bit and everything's streaming a lot faster that I put the frame rates a little slower. Sorry about that. You know what? <coughs> How about a little crazy tainment? I'll throw some crazy tainment you guys this way. It'll be fun. Let's see who I got over here. Let's see if I can find this crazy shit. This would be fun. I know it's in here somewhere. Well, diggity dang dog gone. I ain't seeing it. Let's see if I can find it here. This will be fun. Here we go. Hell yeah. Good deal. <coughs> Some traditional Icelandic medieval music. Reproduced intricately and with love. The real deal.
Good deal. Great tune. So my friends, let's get back into the game. And I'm going to try to find one good fight to end the night. Mic check, mic check. Yep, we're on. Right on. Day 115. Come on, guys. Let's find a fight. We're running around doing our little tasks and our deeds. And let's scoot. Let's head back south. Cause some trouble along the way. So who do we have? Pagan priests? Yep. How's our morale looking? We got excellent morale. We're doing great. Another bowman. Got 10 bowmen. That's not bad. We don't have a dozen yet. We got tons of food, tons of supplies, tons of plunder. We got about 70 troops. I'm not worried about bandits. Ha! Yeah, they're hating on us, aren't they? So we'll leave them be. So, the Scots are pissed at us. Mission accomplished. Now we've raided one monastery down in Altklut, in Regid. So are they still pissed at us? Are they pissed at us yet? Their king will come out and chew our heads off, right? Ha! Ah, we can't get in there either. Yeah, they're pissed at us too. So we lost that port. We gained some new enemies. I can't remember if Dumainen is Saxon or Norse. I should say Dane. Ha! Huh. Negative five. Yeah, so they must be Christians. Pagans aren't welcome here. See ya. Let's go to Edinburgh and get mugged. Yep. A good mugging. Come on, get him, get him, get him. Did you see that? I got my ass kicked. They took my shit. Did you see that? They took my shoes. They took my shoes. They took my new Adidas. Damn it. Fuck. I had a brand new MS Warlord hat and everything. They took that shit too. They took my laces. They threw my shoe up in the telephone wire. Did you see that shit? Damn. What did they steal from me? These little turds. Shit, there was like 20 of them. There was like 20 freaking bandits. Shit, they took a thousand coin from us. Oh, you bastards. Oh, you bastards. You dirty little bastards. So, can we... Oh, no one wants to join our party. They just wanted to mug us. That's what they wanted. They just wanted to mug us. So what kind of crap can we get rid of for some coin, some silver for 125, good deal, the amber, excellente, 756 for the wine, 2500, let's take that wine back, good deal, I'll sell it to the horses, where did it go, where did it go, the wine, the chicken's bad, the tools, more tools, good deal, get rid of that wine. Awesome. <sighs> oh, 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 oh. 
Nobody that we're looking for. All right. So let's go to the Medjuseld. And where is the good Jarl? Half Dan. I just wanted to ask about your lord. Where is he? So he's traveling at every Kara Kara dog. So he's nearby. And that's it. We can go to get some more sailors. Good deal. Right. Didn't see any ransom brokers. I see no slave trader. Nope, just the physician. So let's find some enemies. Let's go make some enemies. Let's go pick a fight with somebody. Since Alt Clute's hating on us, we already have some enemies that we can take. And that will put us in a really good position with the Dane Law. Guthred Nutar was Northumbrian born. And he was actually the king of Cumberland here. And so he was born. He was not a come here. He was a born here. But we want to get down and hook up with Ronvald and get some quests from Ronvald and hopefully. score that mercenary contract. Osirej has become hostile to you due to your mistreatment of Christian subjects. Really? So we'll go uh, raid their little country. Since they become hostile towards us, that means that they are open, they're open game. They're, they're ready for the pickings. And so let's see if we can recruit anyone. Three peasants, we'll take them. We just see cruising by here. Let's see if we can catch up to him. Yep, there's going to be some good fight now. They are going to attack Jorvik, the Welsh. So that was Rick Sieg that we saw. So we need to hook back up with Roenwald. Where's Rick Sieg going? Just traveling. We don't know where he's going. So we got 80 men now. We're sitting at level 10, right? Yep. We're sitting at level 10. We've got level 10, 29 renown. Our reputation is unkind. 33,000 coin, pagans. We cannot read. We've killed 53 enemies.
And that, my friends, I am wrapping it up. We're sitting at three hours. I've been chilling and raiding and plundering and rapping and chatting with you guys and hanging out. And so thanks for hanging out. What are you doing, Smud? Cool deal, dude. Then I'll tune in. Awesome. You need to teach me. I, I'm gonna. I need. To, I'm trying to figure out how to raid. I wanted to raid your stream the other day. We had like five people in here, and you were gonna go stream, and I was gonna watch you. And I wanted. I need to learn how to do a raid. I think I have to go to your channel and then click raid or something, but I'll figure it out. Yeah, man, I'm going to watch you stream while I grab something to eat. So cool. In my own chat, so what do I do? Click your name and click raid? You see, these are the silly things that I don't know how to do. You're kidding. Right next to each other. So, you know, you can do this. I think I, I think I set up the night bot correctly today. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't work. The night bot's not working. I was supposed to be able to put that in and then it would give you information, but it did not work. You're kidding me. So I go like this, raid. I see, so it does work. Cool, right on. I see, right on. So then I just copy and paste your at your name. Right? Yeah, because I wanted to raid your channel the other day. Because I was going to come and watch you stream your game. And I think you were, you were playing the pirate game. And there was like five, five guys, you know, five people hanging out. And so I'm guessing like this. No matches. It says no matches. But you have a dash in your name. So there, I see. Thank you, Smutty. Cool. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so yeah. Yep, that's what I got. Cool. So I go like this, and then I can click your name. Yeah, the little pop-up popped up in the by the chat box. That's cool. So as soon as you... I don't think there's anybody in here. I, I can't. I don't think there's anybody in my room, but the other night there was, and I want—I was coming to watch your stream. Yeah, that's what I—that's how I've got it taped, my friend. That's how I've got it. That's how I have it. And so then, what? I just hit enter, right? Yeah, that's what I did. Oh yeah, yeah, I can read your typos, but um, yeah, that's how I have it. That's how I have. It. But there's no one to raid you with. There's nobody in my room. Yeah, it does. There's like a pop up. There's a little pop up box in the chat. There we go. Cool. Awesome. It finally worked, dude. I had to hit it like three times. Cool. Awesome. I learned something new today. Thank you. <laughs> that's see, that's the silly little things I don't know how to do. I was trying to set up the night bot today. So cool, dude. Play your game. I want to watch. It's bitching. I had fun. That wrestling one was cool. I don't care what you play. I always enjoy watching you play the games. So rock and roll. <laughs> 